AMD wants to shape your curves. Intel's getting really fast at single core, and Nvidia is in big trouble. Oopsie dookie. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, July 3rd, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about some new details coming out on Zen 5. These Ryzen 9000 chips are supposed to have some changes coming to their overclocking settings. This is being revealed by one Usmus who has made tools for overclocking Ryzen in the past. And the Zen 5, Chips are getting curve shapers. You're gonna be able to shape the curve of the frequency and the temperature and the voltage and how the chip operates at various different points. It's going to be an add-on for the curve optimizer that already exists in case you've been tweaking your Ryzen chips, but this should make it so that it's less likely to run at high frequencies at low loads, especially when you don't need the chip running that fast, so potentially just making it more efficient overall for your setup. But now you can have your lovely CPU curves shaped by AMD's new tool. And in case my lovely curves start getting copied on YouTube with generative AI, I now have the ability to take that into my hands and get it taken down from the places I don't want it to be. There's a new YouTube policy that's rolling out when it comes to AI generated content, especially if it's taking the likeness of somebody without their permission using AI to alter or create synthetic content that looks or sound like you, you now have the ability to do something about it and the person who posted that originally has 48 hours to actually respond to it and have it taken down. There will be details where it is allowed in like parody or satire or you know when it comes to politicians or a well-known individual like a public figure that could have different rules than just an average person having their likeness generated but uh, I wouldn't say that I am a public figure so hopefully I, I still have some recourse to if you guys want to generate me talking about uh, sucking down some sheet gaggers on the 4th of July don't do that do not do that or upload it did you just woo that we're trying to not condone it Tyler? Oh, I just heard sheets gagger. <laughs> yeah, my bad. All right. Well, you know who I wish I could AI generate? Reese. But he just, he runs away from those neural nets so quickly you can't do it. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Hope you guys are doing well and look at that, some deals for you. Starting off today, we have the Cooler Master Mobius 140p ARGB case fan. Going for only $13.99 with the coupon applied, making it $16 off. But then next up, we have the NZXT T120 CPU air cooler available in white for only $29.99 making it $30 or 50% off. And then lastly, we have this LG Ultra Gear 34 inch 3440 by 1440 240Hz 800R curved OLED gaming monitor for only $679.99 with the promo code making it $520 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, if you wheel and deal in single core performance, you like that single threaded power. Turns out Intel's Arrow Lake, which is their next gen chip, not 15th gen, because why would they call it something that's sensible? No, that's gonna be core ultra something 200 or another. I'm just I'm just so tired of it. Anyways, what I'm not tired of is the increased performance. Arrow Lake, at least according to this leaked CPU Z benchmark, shows that it's between 20 and 25% faster than some of the previous chips. 25% over the 13900K, 20% over the 14900KS, beating it quite considerably. You see that the Arrow Lake chip right here is at 1143 on that benchmark, and the rest of the lineup, i9-14900KS losing to it, 14900K. AMD's chips are at the rock bottom because they don't necessarily perform quite as well in the CPU-Z benchmark. Obviously, there's a lot of unknowns here, like RAM speed, clock speed, uh, the power profiles, whether or not it was liquid nitrogen overclocked or anything like that, but this is still rather impressive for what we're expecting out of Arrow Lake. What is not is the multi-threaded performance. Okay, get ready. You see Intel Arrow Lake at the top of the chart here. It is uh, pretty bad on the bottom part of the chart when it comes to its multi-threaded performance. Being just about where the 13700K is, but losing to the 14700K, which actually has more cores than the 13700K. So it's coming in closer to the 12900K, but then losing to the 7950X, the 13900K, and the 14900K. So if you're looking for a single-threaded beast, Arrow Lake might be it. If you're looking for a multi-threaded powerhouse, looks like Intel's previous gen or the 9950X likely will be the way to go. Obviously, this is just a preliminary benchmark, so don't necessarily hold to that uh, this is how it's going to play out once these chips launch, but it's it's interesting nonetheless. And what's also interesting is uh, what's going on over in France with regards to NVIDIA, because they are going to get some antitrust charges against them 
from the French government. You might remember about nine months ago, French authorities did a dawn raid against NVIDIA, seizing various different documents and just going to town on their French headquarters. And it turns out that that is now coming to light because of antitrust lawsuits that should be coming against NVIDIA due to anti-competitive pressures that they're putting on various different companies, especially in the wake of the AI boom, specifically mentioning that the sector's dependence on NVIDIA's CUDA chip programming software, the only one that is 100% compatible with the NVIDIA chips that have become essential for accelerated computing. All of that seems to be a problem in the eyes of the French government. And this likely will have the same potential max fine that we saw for both Apple and Microsoft when it comes to them violating the DMA or Digital Markets Act, up to 10% of their global revenue. So Nvidia getting lumped in here, if they are found guilty of it, they could be fined up to 10% of their global revenue. These countries in the EU and the EU in general are just not freaking around anymore. It appears that they are going after all of these major tech behemoths and trying to get them to actually come in line with what they expect out of uh, well-regulated companies. So we'll see how this plays out. This is uh, likely not going to uh, take a swift amount of time. This is probably going to drag out in the courts, especially with the amount of money that will be thrown behind in the legal scene. But NVIDIA getting hit with the antitrust. Do you trust them? Or are you anti on that trust? Cause that's what it means. That's how you understand what that word's supposed to imply. And you guys applied a lot of things over in the comments. So let's read yesterday's episode of Hot News Comments. Over on Floatplane, we got little Nicky Scarfo saying, Brett, but we were told we needed to be at CL30 for gaming. I'm confused. Who told you that? Huh? Who told you you needed to be at that? Also, the cast latency on RAM is also like a function of the actual RAM speed. So the cast latency will increase whenever the frequency goes up, but the overall latency ends up roughly staying the same. So just the, just throw out what it, what specifically it means right now, because it's going to change. It's going to shift. And you, the cast latency of 30 on a DDR4 stick would be obscene. It's too high. And we got Kryptonite saying more PCI Express lanes. Yes, now Intel needs to make a chip that can compete with the 7800X 3D. That may be error like, maybe single core speed, fast gaming, good good stuff out of error like potentially, we'll see. And over on YouTube, we got Charles Childers saying 6,000 to 6,400 that should get an extra 0.001 FPS. Hey. It's usually like one or two. All right, let's 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 show some respect. Then we got E saying, get your colonoscopies. I've lost people who got theirs checked at 49 years of age and got quoted six months to live. That, that's, I'm sorry, my friend, that stinks. But yes, definitely take care of your health if you can. Uh, go, go get things checked. There's no, there's, unless you can't, don't wait. Don't let your pride or the, you don't wanna go to the doc, just do it for, for us, your loved ones, your friends. And then, Hey, Vu saying, you live like this? You come into my house and tell me how to arrange my furniture? Yes, that's my job here. And then we got PRCT saying, it's 8 p.m. in here. Also, should I wait for the Lunar Lake or buy a Meteor Lake laptop now? That, that's obviously gonna be a personal choice as to whether or not you can wait. Lunar Lake does appear to be a major step up from Meteor Lake in quite a few ways. So if you have the opportunity to wait, that could work. But also additionally, the new AMD 9000 chips. Nope, they're not called that. They're not called that. What are they called? AI, AI. Oh, the AI what? 300, AI 300 chips that AMD is coming out with. Why is that so hard to remember? Um, those should be launching sooner in case you need something that's kind of similar to what Lunar Lake's supposed to be providing. AMD might have a, a leg up when it comes to the graphics performance and on the new GPU. So uh, there, there are options out there. I don't know necessarily you have to wait for Lunar Lake. I think AMD offers a very competitive thing. If you're just looking for CPU performance and battery life, Snapdragon X Elite and X Plus chips do appear to be pretty good on that front. Just don't uh, try to use them for anything GPU accelerated that hasn't been optimized for ARM because it's not, not pretty. And I'm pretty sure I'm done with this episode of Hot News. So I'll be back with more of the hottest tech news tomorrow, my friends. We'll see you then.